Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome back to another Minecraft modding tutorial video for 1.16 using the Forge API. Now in this episode, we're gonna be adding custom mob spawn eggs for our custom entity that we created. And we have to do this a little bit differently than how we create custom items because our entities, although they're registered to the game, they haven't been created yet until we actually like are inside of the game. So uh, that's gonna cause your spawn eggs to throw a ton of errors and actually break your entire mod. So we can work around this by uh, creating a list essentially of unadded eggs which is what we're gonna do and then we're gonna slowly add them to the game so to do that you want to come over to your items package here and you want to create a new class and we're just gonna call this mod spawn egg item and you can add a repository now we want to make sure of course that this extends the vanilla uh, spawn egg item and you can import that class uh, and then of course it's gonna throw an error. We want to hover over this and create constructor matching super. And we're going to edit this constructor in a bit, but first we need to make two uh, very important fields. So the first one is going to be, uh, it could be, I think it could be public, but we could just do protected. So protected static final list. And uh, this is gonna take in the class that we're using right now. So mod spawn egg item. And uh, you wanna name this unadded underscore eggs. This is that list I was talking about earlier, and this is going to equal a new array list. Uh, and of course we want to import both array list and we want to import a list as well. And there we go. So this is the list I was talking about earlier, and we also need a supplier so that we can actually pass in our entity uh, without any errors being thrown. So we want to create a private final lazy, uh, and then this can be parameterized around a uh, generic extends entity type. Um, and then of course this has to be parameterized as well. Uh, super crazy uh, with the generic. And uh, this is just gonna be named entity uh, type supplier. And you can import lazy as well. Uh, so this is our supplier. We're going to uh, be initializing this or instantiating it rather uh, in a second. But uh, for right now, we need to change this uh, constructor a bit. So you can keep the primary color in, keep the secondary color, keep the builder. Uh, but what we want to change is actually this right here, the type in. So you can delete this. And this actually has to be a, a final registry object. Uh, parameterized around, all right, get ready for this. I, I know a ton of parameterization in this episode, but um, a generic, which extends entity type again, uh, parameterized around a generic. So yeah, there we go. And then the name is going to be the same as this entity type supplier. And uh, we can just instantiate our this dot uh, entity type supplier to the entity type supplier. Although I actually don't think we can do that. I think we actually need, yeah, cause it's a supplier. So we need lazy dot of, and then we can pass in our entity type supplier gets. Yeah, so that works fine. Um, we also need, uh, since we don't have type in anymore, we don't actually have the entity type. So we're just going to pass in null. Uh, and this shouldn't matter really, cause uh, we're not gonna be using um, uh, this really anyway. We're really gonna be, um, a focus on adding to this list. All right, and then the last thing we need to do is just uh, add um, this class to our unadded eggs. So we can do unadded eggs dot add this. And there we go, that will add this specific egg uh, to our unadded eggs. So now what we need to do is make sure that we can get the type and we can do that by at overriding, uh, I believe it's get type, yeah, get type. And uh, this is uh, just a method that you want to override. Uh, you can, I don't know what all of this is, but uh, you just want compound nbt, and then we can just name this nbt. It might be unmapped, I think is why it looks like that. Uh, and then I think everything is good, but we want to return, definitely not this. We want to return uh, this dot entity type supplier. So again, we're getting that entity from our supplier uh, with dot get. So your supplier and then dot get. All right, so that's the type. Uh, the last thing we need to do is create a static method that we're actually gonna call uh, in a event uh, in a bit. And this will initialize these spawn eggs at a very specific time right when we register our entities. So we wanna create a public static void just named init uh, spawn eggs. And inside of this method here, 
uh, we're going to do a few things. First, we have to get the actual list of existing spawn eggs in the game. Now, this is a private value, so we have to access this through reflection. I haven't really talked about reflection at all in this series, uh, but all reflection is is essentially accessing private vanilla values. So uh, I'll be covering this in more depth later, so don't worry about that. Uh, but we are going to be getting a map that uh, has a key of the entity and then a value of the egg. So we want to do a final map uh, with the key as an entity type, uh, just like that. And then the value is going to be a spawn egg item. And uh, you can import map real quick. And we can just name this eggs because they are the existing spawn eggs. And the way you actually access a private value uh, through reflection is Forge is a great way of doing this. You just grab the obfuscation reflection helper and then just call dot get private uh, value. And first you want to pass in the actual class that you're uh, trying to access a field from. In this case, it would be the spawn egg item class. So we would do spawn egg item and then just get the class. So dot class uh, for the instance, you can just pass in null for right now. And for the field name, I had to write this down because it's uh, very long, very uh, obs obscure, um, and it's field underscore uh, 195 uh, 987. Definitely me reading off of my notebook right now. Um, let me make sure that's right. Field underscore 195 987 underscore B. Yeah, super obscure, uh, but that is the field. And this field is actually in spawn egg item, and it is um, this map here. So we're, we're accessing this map essentially. So now that we have the map of existing eggs, we also want to grab uh, the default um, dispenser behavior because we're going to have to modify the way dispensers uh, use our item. Uh, the dispensers don't know that our item is like supposed to um, uh, spawn an entity rather than just dispense it as an item. So we definitely need to, need to get that and modify it. So we can do that by getting the default uh, dispense item behavior. And we can just name that dispense uh, behavior. And this is just going to be equal to a new default um, dispense item behavior and we're going to open this up with some curly braces so that we can actually at override uh, the dispense stack method and this is going to allow us to change what happens with our specific item here uh, when it gets dispensed by a dispenser so uh, let me add a semicolon here we uh, want to remove this return and uh, well, first we want to get the direction. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make a dispenser spawn our entity when it has a, a spawn egg inside of it. So we can get the direction that the, uh, the dispenser is facing with direction. Direction is equal to source, which is the, the block source dot get block states dot get. And then we can just get the di uh, dispenser, my bad, dispenser block dot uh, facing. So this will make sure um, oh, make sure you import direction. This will make sure that uh, the direction is always the f direction that the dispenser block is facing. We can also get uh, the type here, the actual entity itself uh, with entity type, um, name this type is equal to, this is gonna be a little tricky. We have an item stack here, a stack but it's, we don't know that it's a, a spawn egg item yet. Well, we do, we know, but the code doesn't know. So we need to cast it as a spawn egg item first. So spawn egg item, and uh, you can cast that stack there. And now that we've actually cast it as a, uh, oh, we have to, it's not just the stack, we have to get the item. So stack.get item. And then once you've casted this, uh, this item here to a spawn egg item, you can do dots, uh, get type, and you can just pass in stack.get tag. So uh, this line here essentially is just converting our item into a spawn egg item and then getting the type uh, through the tag essentially. And that will give us the actual entity that is connected to the spawn egg. So now we have the entity and we just need to spawn it in the world. So we can do type.spawn and then we have to pass in the world. So uh, the best way to get that is just source.getWorld. Um, we have to pass in the actual item stack, so stack. Um, for the player in, we can just leave this as null. Null, there we go. For the block position, you just want to do source.getBlockPosition. For the um, spawn reason, we can just do spawn reason dot, and uh, this would be spawn reason dot dispenser, because we are using a, a dispenser here to spawn our, our, uh, our entity. I'm gonna bring this down real quick just so you can see it better. Then uh, next thing we need 
is um, the, uh, excuse me here, um, the uh, boolean on when not to. So uh, we don't want to spawn it when the direction is not equal to direction dot up. So wait, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Direction is not equal to direction dot up. So when the dispenser is not facing upwards, it will, yeah, it will spawn the entity. So yeah, that works great. And then uh, we can just pass in false for this last value because we don't need it. Uh, so this will actually spawn our entity inside of the world. Uh, your dispenser will spawn it when it actually dispenses this specific item. And then of course, because we've spawned it, we need to reduce uh, one from the dispenser because it did actually dispense it. So stack.shrink and we can shrink it by one. And then finally, we can just return the stack. All right, sorry that I'm so scatterbrained right now. Uh, it's a lot of information. I hope you sort of get the gist here. We're essentially grabbing the list of existing eggs and the default dispenser behavior. We're modifying the dif dispenser behavior so that it dispenses your um, item as an entity rather than just like throwing your spawn egg into onto the ground uh, because that's how vanilla does it. And then um, what we have to do now is just add all of our unedited eggs to our eggs map here. So to do that, we can just have a for loop that uh, grabs a final spawn egg item named spawn egg. And we're gonna loop through the unadded eggs list here. And for all the spawn eggs in our unadded eggs list, uh, we're just going to put them inside of the map. So eggs.put, and then you can just put the spawn egg.get type, uh, and you can just pass a null for the compound NBT. And then we also have to make sure for the value we put in, of course, the spawn egg. So just put in spawn egg. And that will make sure that uh, the vanilla map here of spawn eggs has your custom spawn eggs in it and that the key is set to your, your custom entity and the value is set to your custom spawn egg. So hopefully that makes sense there. And then we also need to set the dispenser block behavior. So dispenser block dot register dispense behavior and uh, we would pass in for the item in just our spawn egg, of course, because that's the item. And then for the behavior, the behavior we just created up here, so dispense behavior. All right. And uh, I think last thing you need to do is just clear unadded eggs because we want this to be clear uh, every single time. So there we go. All right. So there we go. We're all done. So this class is pretty much finished. We've got the constructor. We've got this override to get type and our static method here. Um, grabs the vanilla uh, map, uh, grabs the vanilla dispense behavior, uh, edits, edits it a bit essentially by overriding the dispense stack method, um, adds our custom eggs, and then clears the, uh, the list. So now that we have this class finished, uh, I know it was a handful of work, we can actually go to our uh, util class here and go to client event bus subscriber. And uh, I mean, really you could do this anywhere that you have client events being uh, th used, but I'm going to do this specifically in here because this is like a utility class. And you just wanna create an at subscribe event. And uh, we're just gonna call this public static void on register entities. And this is gonna pass in a final registry event dot. Uh, we wanna import a registry event first. So registry event dot. Uh, register, register, and this is going to be parameterized around entity type, and uh, we just want to name this event. So this event here that we're using, um, we are making sure that we uh, we're going to be making sure that we initialize our eggs um, on register entities. So essentially, when we register our entities to the game. So just like you know, we created it just earlier here, the init spawn eggs. We just want to call that. So. Uh, mod spawn egg item dots in it spawn eggs. So yeah, there we go. Now all this code is being called. All of this has been called uh, right when um, the entities have been registered. All right, now we can just actually add our item to the game. So uh, let's go over to in it here, go to mod items, and we can just add a new item right down here. And just like with our other blocks, we're just gonna do public static final, again, registry object parameterized around our new class. So in this case, mod spawn egg item. And then you can name it again, the name of your, your object, your item. So mine is gonna be hog underscore spawn underscore egg. And this is gonna be equal to items dot register. 
the name of your object. So hog underscore spawn underscore egg. And then I'm gonna bring this down just so we can see it a little bit better. Again, you want a supplier here uh, to our new mod spawn egg item. And this is gonna pass in a few things. So first your, your mod entity type. So mod entity type dot and then you can grab your entity mine is the the custom hog we made uh comma again if you wanted to use vanilla um vanilla entities for your custom spawn eggs for whatever reason you could do that with just entity type uh but anyway so the next one is uh the color so this color is going to be um the base color for your your mob spawn egg so like you know, different spawn eggs have different colors. This is gonna be like the, the base coat, the base color. And the way you actually get this color, this is a hex, uh, hex code color. You can go to the link in the description and it'll take you to this page right here, which will uh, allow you to create your own HTML color codes, hex codes, all that sort of stuff. So you can just move this around to whatever color you want. I'm going to choose like a brownish color here. Uh, I'm gonna do light for the base coat. And then you can just copy this code right here it's also right here as well, right bef uh, right after the hashtag, you can type a zero X and then paste in your hex code. So yeah, that's a valid hex code. And then for the, uh, then the next color that we need to pass in is like the accent color. So the accent color, I want it to be a little bit darker like this. And then again, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to copy that hex code, copy. And then I'm going to, uh, again, first type zero X and then paste it in. Add a comma. And then the final thing we need to pass in is of course our item properties. So new item dot properties uh, dot, and then we can just set like the group. That's all that's really important right now. So tutorial dot tab for our, our custom item group. And there we go. So now our uh, hog spawn item is actually in the game, but uh, we do need to make sure we set the, the model. There, again, there's no texture here uh, because it's making it for us with these colors but uh, we do need to set the model. So go over to resources, go to uh, assets, go to models, go to item. And inside of here, we're going to create a new file. So we can right click, create a new file. And again, name it exactly what you put your, for your item. So hog underscore spawn underscore egg dot JSON, add a repository. Now I didn't make a paste bin for this because it's very simple because there's no texture this time. So just add some curly braces and you would just want to set the parent here. So parent, you want to set the parent to, uh, it's going to be the same pretty much every time. Item slash template underscore spawn underscore egg. And that's pretty much it. You're done. Uh, and now we have a spawn egg in the game. So in the future, whenever you want to add spawn eggs uh, with your custom entities, just copy this line up here, paste it down below, and then again, change the name, change the name here, change the entity that you are setting for the spawn egg. You can change the color, the base code, the accent color, and then if you would like, you can change the tab, but you can keep it the same. So yeah, that's how you add uh, mob eggs to the game. Of course, we do still need to set the actual name in our lang folder. So open up your lang folder, go to ian underscore us.json, and then you can just, again, make a new entry really quickly. Uh, and this again, will just like every other item is item dot your mod ID dot the name of your item. So hog underscore spawn underscore egg. And then we can set the name to whatever we want. So in my case, uh, hog spawn egg and file save all. And now if we actually run the game, we can go check out and test our custom spawn egg. All right, so we're inside of the game now. And if we go to our creative tab and we go to our custom tab here, there is our custom spawn egg. You can see it's textured perfectly with those uh, base and accent colors that we set with the hex decimal color codes. Now, uh, if we actually right click on the ground here, you can see that it does actually spawn our entity. And let's just check really quickly that the dispenser functionality is working. So if we throw in our egg in there and we flip the switch, there we go. It does actually spawn an entity and you can see that it did uh, decrement by one. And also if we go into game mode survival here and we use the egg, you can see every time we use it, uh, the stack size decreases by one. So it's working perfectly and yeah. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks guys so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot about how to make your own custom spawn eggs and I will see you in the next episode.